This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers. This segment will be very different for some of you because it will take you out of your comfort zones. For Amelia Miller and Monica Roberts, it is where they are every day, now comfortable with who they are, but recognizing the challenge of having others find that same level of comfort. Amelia Miller and Monica Roberts, welcome and thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you. Appreciate okay. your time you. this morning. Amelia, let's start with you. How far, how long into your life did you realize that there was something different about what was going on in your life? Well, first, Campbell, I'd like to thank Channel 2 and also yourself for inviting myself and Monica to come down and give the voice to the transgender community. Channel 2 has been the first media outlet to actually come out to the transgender community and invite us to give this dialogue. And as representatives of our community, we're very, very grateful and thankful that Channel 2 has done that. With regards to your question, um, I was born intersex, so pretty much as soon as my mother gave birth to me, they knew that there was something different about me. Mm -hmm. And I remember about three years old, I told my, my mother, why am I being dressed like a boy? And she actually kind of screamed. And I remember that because of her reaction, she screamed. And that was when they first started to realize that the doctor's decisions that were made when I was born we're in direct conflict with who I am. So at, pretty much right after you were born, doctors then made a decision basically on what sex you were going to be in terms of a hysterectomy at a very young age then apparently. That's correct. And so from that point on, you lived your life, you were supposed to be a man or a boy, but you didn't feel that way. Right. I conformed to what society and what my upbringing uh, demanded that I be. And essentially that creates a condition known as gender dysphoria where we're in direct conflict with our innate selves mm -hmm. and with the identity that we believe is, um, you know, between our ears right. and not between our legs. Um, and basically that resulted in 36 years of living my life in conflict with myself right. and I was basically at war with myself. So. Um, that resulted in, in a very serious suicide attempt, which I'm very lucky I survived. However, um, that's when I decided that I'm going to live a truthful life and an, an authentic life. Monica, how about you? I had started uh, discovering the kind of the dis dissonance between the body I was in and the gender identity probably about age five or age six. Mm -hmm. And as I started dealing with trying to deal with it and trying to I didn't have a name for it until about 1975 when uh, there were stories about uh, Tony Mays a trans woman who was living here in Houston and getting harassed by HPD mm -hmm. uh, sued and uh, actually won a lawsuit to keep her from being harassed. Now, both of you are legally women correct? I mean in terms of what any kind of the terminology in terms of what right now women Yes, I live, I live my life 24-7 as a female, and the state of Texas and also the federal government recognizes that I am, in fact, a woman. And you've seen the protests outside at City Hall, have you not? And when you see those protests, what goes through your mind? Either one of you can chime in on what your thoughts are when you see the kind of protests and some of the comments that are being made as a result of that. They're hurtful. They're very hurtful, to, and especially when they come you know, say, to the trans women of color community. When we're seeing ministers who represent, you know, who represent our community uh, basically denigrating and, and, say, and this, I say, and they're ju it's just hurtful. It's I, I want to talk in terms of what your challenge is in trying to get acceptance in the community. I have statistics and information here mm -hmm. and it kind of indicates what the uphill climb is and I think you both know that. I'm not mm -hmm. telling you anything you already know but the Pew Research Center did a recent poll that showed that 90 percent of Americans say they know someone who is gay or lesbian or bisexual, mm -hmm. but only 8% say they know anyone who is transgendered, men or women. And that perhaps leads to this other statistic that indicates that 90% of transgendered people report some sort of harassment or discrimination, mm -hmm. and 
that 41% attempted suicide or attempt suicide. And Amelia, you were in that category. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that none of those statistics really surprise either one of you. No, they don't. In fact, um, the transgender suicide rate is our demographic is one of the highest um, of any demographics that are recorded. Currently, uh, I believe it's at 40%. So about two in every five transgender women, and it's even higher for women of color. Um, are, are we have that suicide is a very um, real and very stressful part of our life. Um, but you know this is a, a prime example of why the Houston Hero is needed. Um, Hero stands for Houston Equal Rights Ordinance. And it's because we as a community are discriminated against. And a lot of that is due to misinformation about what an actual transgender person is. And this ordinance not only helps the transgender community, but it helps all Houstonians based on race, sex, gender identity, uh, veteran status, veteran status, pregnancy, um, and your genetic makeup, country of origin. So it's not just the transgender community that has benefited by this. It's all Houstonians, and Houston needs this audience because all Houstonians deserve to be tr um, treated with dignity and respect. I noticed that part of it was the bathroom issue on the ordinance, where people were upset about that. What, what kind of response do you have to folks who say, wait a minute, you, you're going to cause a problem if you go in the bathroom. We can't have you going into the bathroom just because you, quote, identify as a woman. As far as I'm concerned, the, uh, you know, it's, it's not just a bathroom issue. It is a human rights issue. Uh, we're talking about providing human rights for not only the entire city of Houston, but, you know, our community will benefit as well. Uh, long, yes, as John F. Kennedy said you know, back in 1963, when you grant rights to others that belong to them, you, you say you you expand human rights for yourself, and this is exactly what this situation, what we're dealing with in terms of uh, you say of this situation. We were spoke we were speaking earlier uh, mm -hmm. the other day, and I know that both of you were t talking about the job part of this, the discrimination potential of this whole thing, which is one of the reasons why you think this particular ordinance is going to be helpful or could be very helpful for you uh, should it pass because of the discrimination you feel in that area. Correct. Um, as transgenders, we have a lot, we face a lot of discrimination in the employment sector. Uh, I myself have got 20 years of experience in the oil and gas sector, which is huge in Houston, as an electrical engineer, and currently I'm in the workforce. I'm looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And this ordinance will help protect me and others like me to find employment where we won't be harassed against and we're treated equally with dignity and respect. Monica, yeah. a little less than a minute, but I want to get your response to that and what do you think this ordinance is going to be able to do for you? Um, just saying, I'd say I would echo the uh, words of my uh, colleague here. It will help the community. We're looking at 26% unemployment in the African American trans community sector. It's 14% uh, overall. It's uh, in the overall trans community, it's 20% in the Latino community. Are you but both hopeful this is going to get passed, or what are your thoughts? Well, Camber, you know, outside right now, it's a beautiful day. I'm sure you're aware of that, being a meteorologist. And next Wednesday, the 28th, I'm sure we're going to have cause for celebration, and it's going to be a beautiful day and we'll be out there celebrating. Well, we're going to hold it right there, but I thank you for coming, and thank both of you for coming in. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation we haven't had up to this point. Thanks to, to you for letting us have it here this morning. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you. you. Good luck as you move on in your lives. Mm -hmm.